You know, let's get it. Let's get it. Yes, sir. All right. So this is episode nine of the One v One Hoops Report podcast. Back with my guys Chris and Mike. Yes, sir. Uh, we've got a lot to get into, kind of, because we got the big game coming up in two days now. Yes, sir. Sheesh. Balls like East versus West. Uh, we pretty much covered a lot of it already, and I've seen uh, Chris, I've seen you on Balls Life, uh, IG lives a lot. I keep missing them, but I keep seeing you in there talking to them. Uh, do you got anything that you guys talked about you want to talk about here? Oh, there's so much. You're gonna have to break it up into like five parts, but <laughs> let me give like yeah. the gist of what they're saying. So, if you backtrack a little bit, um, I made a post <laughs> saying that. Two out of the five East Coast players have blocked me, and that was because <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was that was because I was going for the West Coast squad. Now they're probably just doing it out of a gag and stuff like that. Everybody's cool. Like I'm cool with everybody. Everybody's cool with me. You know, it's all love at the end of the day. Um, mm-hmm. I'm now getting into the West Coast's uh, lives and stuff like that. Um, I originally used to just go to Ty Glover which is basically the man in the middle for the West Coast squad. I used to go on his lives a lot, and we used to always chop it up every now and then. So the original live I was in wasn't a West Coast live. Like, the West Coast um, guy who runs the page wasn't in there, so it was just a bunch of West Coast players. So, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say it was Mm -hmm. a West Coast live. So Mm -hmm. I hop into the live with Ty, and it was just me and him at first. And then he says, hold on, let me invite my man Bionic. And, you know, Bionic came in. And, you know, it was me, Bionic, and Ty. We were all talking. We were basically just saying. Um, it wasn't too much about the uh, game that's happening August 19th this Thursday. It was kind of about just park basketball. And it was basically the topics that we talked about already, which was, you know, why park basketball has taken over and how much of an impact it's making on the world. So we mm-hmm. chopped that up for a little bit. But then we started getting into the um, big game that's happening this Thursday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're basically just saying, hey, you're kind of like the news analyst guy. You're, I'm getting nicknames. I'm getting DMs of nicknames, me being called Chris Bayless, uh, Stephen A. <laughs> Rist. Um, <laughs> Stephen A. Rist. <laughs> Stephen A. Rist, Chris Kellerman. Like, uh, just, a whole, just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So they're basically just saying, like, can you break this down on how you think it'll go for the people that are watching? And I was like, yeah. okay. So basically, I've just been having a, just a routine of just a whole bunch of East Coast and West Coast players just asking me, okay, what do you think about this matchup? What do you think about that matchup? So right. that was the West Coast side. Now, the East Coast, now, you know, our relationship's a little bit rocky, but we're all good now. It's all <laughs> love and stuff like that. So yeah. the East Coast was going to have a live with Duke and Austin Mills. Yeah. Duke has me blocked, all right? But yeah. I had a second account, so there was no stopping me. I was going to get in that <laughs> live regardless. So apparently, if somebody has you blocked and they're on a live with somebody that you don't have blocked, it won't let you watch the live because somebody has you blocked on yeah. it. So I was like, all right, I'm going to my original. I mean, I'll go to my uh second account. <laughs> they act like I wouldn't have made a second account and been in it anyway come on now (laughs) so i make the second account i jump in but i was on my first account right so i had my second account watching i was on my friend's account to see if they would invite my friend all right so they invited my friend not knowing it was me so as soon as i joined they saw my face and they were like oh hell no get this man (laughs) out of here they literally were like get man out of here i literally didn't even get to say a word i was like what so yeah. duke said hold on <laughs> was that chris and then Gotti and mills were like yeah that was chris and then he was like nah get him get him back in here i got some shit to say to him and i was like "Ooh, thank okay, you okay so that so this is what i wanted this is i'm just ah this is the content i needed so he invites <laughs> me back in but He's trying to figure out what account it was because, like I said before, I was on my friend's account. And my friend's account has, like, a weird name where it's, like, a bunch of uppercase, lowercase letters and an underscore yeah. somewhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. So 
I just spam my my second account, which is just Chris with Doris with every word spaced out. And they were like, okay, I'll invite him back. All right. So they invite me back. And then Duke was like, man, it's crazy. You own the East Coast, but why in the world are you going for the West Coast? And I was just, you know, giving them my take on why I think I'm the West Coast will beat the East Coast. You know, we go through all that. Now, mind you, before I was getting into this live, right? Mm-hmm. They were inviting people before and they said, hey, you got one minute to talk about what you think uh, are the predictions for the East versus West game. They were giving everybody one minute. All right. And they would, Scotty had it timed and everything. And he'd be like, okay, guys, I gotta let you go. Blah, blah, blah. In the middle of them, just cut them off. <laughs> well, because like he was trying to, because he was trying to like invite people in yeah. and stuff like that. It wasn't like an, any harsh intent. So mm-hmm. that was kind of like the role that he was trying to like, you know, do. So when he invites me in, I'm getting questions from Duke. Okay, well, why do you think this? Why do you think that? And I'm getting questions from Austin, like so, so specific questions, like, okay, why do you think this? Why do you think that? What about this player and that player being matched up? Oh, uh, and then Scotty's just asking me questions. I'm like, I thought it was supposed to be a minute. I'm in here for about ten. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, interrogating. Right. You. Yeah, they're like interrogating you, but like it's all love though. Um, yeah, they're. Asking me like questions about like matchups. Oh, why why should Bionic guard Duke? Uh, but uh, Duke has to guard Frank Nitty, and Frank Nitty doesn't want to guard him. And then I'm just like, you gotta think like think about it like this. Let's take it all the way back to let's say 2013 when the Pacers took Miami to Game Seven. All right, LeBron being the best player on the Miami Heat at the time, he's he's not really even guarding Paul George like that. Paul George has to drop over mm-hmm. 35 points, 40 points a game, and still struggling. LeBron James stacks it up in all different types of categories, doesn't have to drop that many points, and still give hell to Paul George, who has to consistently do that just to even stay in the game, just to barely win, while LeBron mm-hmm. James is just excelling in all the categories and having his yep. teammates involved. Mm-hmm. All right? There's been plenty of times where you're just like, Damn, I didn't know LeBron dropped a quiet 33 points. That, he did that effortlessly. Well, then, you know, it's so obvious that, you know, Paul George was sweating, uh, dropping 35 plus games and still lose. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you got to think, Nitty could have that mentality because Nitty is at a level to where he's played at way more consistent comp ex NBA players. He's in the big three. He's playing in the Drew League. He's a Drew League MVP. Like he's been around and he's done a two lot time, for the two game. Time. Yeah, two, two time. time. <laughs> two yeah. time Drew League MVP. So like he's gonna have certain like tactics that he's gonna use in the game. All right. Now think about it. Bionic is gonna be guarding Duke. Bionic yeah. will tire Bionic will tire Duke out in the physical aspect of the game. And you know, he could get in his head on the mental aspect of the game because Bionic is such a freak athlete and stuff like that. If you're dealing with Bionic on the defensive end and you having to guard him, and then you're going to have to deal with Frank Nitty on the offensive end, like, oh, man. Like, that's that's going to tire you out. Like, think about it. You're getting somebody who's just hard-nosed defense and so athletic, right? His athleticism is insane. And then you're going with somebody who has the highest IQ in that game. East first, East first, West, all players, Frank Nitty has the highest IQ because he's been around the game so much in so different levels. Yeah. So that's why like, I explained that to him. Now, they go down the list of saying, okay, you know, White Harrison versus the Clamp God, uh, Caesar and A. Millie, this, that, the third. Now, this is what I said about um, A. Millie guarding White Iverson. Now, people wanted to be like, okay, you know, A. Millie's the point guard for the East Coast. White Everson's the point guard for the West Coast. Which one is better? And I, I gave a very, very neutral response, all right, because I wanted to just be fair in this situation. So the thing about it is White Iverson is really offensively sound. Defense, F minus. Terrible. Because <laughs> yeah. his, def- yeah. his defense is non-existent. And that's what yes. really killed him in the end. All right, the West Coast, it could really kill them. All five players need to play defense. All five players need to guard the other five that are going against them. All right, you can't just play four and five defense. It, that's just not how it works, especially yeah. when you're going against a team that has been more consistent with their lineup than the West Coast. Exactly. So if you take these players out of a five-on-five situation and you look at them 1v1, A. Millie is 
taller and longer than Wyatt Everson. So defensively, A. Millie excels in that category. All right? Yeah. Wyatt Everson doesn't because he does, doesn't play deep regardless. Um, offensively, this is where it became difficult. All right? Wyatt Everson has the quickest release on that floor. All right? Yeah. A. Millie gets a lot of elevation and him having a longer reach. Wyatt Everson's not going to block that and his non-existent defense. So A. Millie could really win that matchup, and here's why. is because, like I explained, he's taller, longer. He gets more elevation on his jump shot. And, like, he's going to muscle his way past Wyatt Everson because of his defense not being there. Like, as far as if A. Mm -hmm. Millie – I understand what the East Coast was trying to do when they wanted the clamp guard on White Iverson, but like A. Millie on White Iverson, A. Millie would probably give him a lot of problems as well. And I would like to see A. Millie versus White Iverson rather than seeing the clamp guard versus White Iverson. I think people want to yeah. really test. I, I think if you really want to test um, the clamp guard, Tim Carter, by the way, I hate saying the clown guard. I just want to say his name. So, <laughs> yeah. Tim, if you really want to test Tim's defense and actually see if he lives up to the name of the clown guard, put him on Frank Nitty. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to think, the East Coast has been saying, Scotty's been saying that, oh, uh, Tim held an NBA player to zero points and stuff like that. Nobody has seen the film yet. We're just going off a of word of mouth. I'm not saying I don't believe you, Scotty. I'm just saying, like, we need to see, like, this type of proof. We need to see the gameplay. We don't know when that's coming out. But if we want to see it in a better aspect, put the clamp god on Frank Nitty. Yeah. Right? That's what we want to see. Yeah, so yeah, Frank, Frank Nitty's surrounded by ex-NBA players, like NBA, like, Hall of Famers and stuff like that. He's going against consistent, consistent comp at a high, high level, higher than what – you know, Tim has showed in his ball is life videos because Tim is locking everybody up that plays park basketball and, you know, at the, you know, D one division level with division two, three, one, all those things. So let's see if he can live up to that name guarding Frank Nitty, not really yeah. Wyatt Iverson. <laughs> I think, I think so a hundred percent. Like one thing I can say, the thing I like about Tim though, like, he even in their video, he didn't really even do no talking at all. Bro was literally just silent, ready to play. So I'm honestly, I'm thinking I'll see. I can honestly see Tim being a, a dog with this, and Frank and Nitty is a dog too, like for sure, mentally. But mm-hmm. I, I think that'll be a good game because they both do talk. Frank Nitty does talk regardless. You know what I'm saying? And so does oh, Tim yeah. mm-hmm. on the court. So I think that's just gonna be like who's the um. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog type thing. So that's what I think it's going to be like. And I'm, I'm yeah. kind of excited for that. So I think that would be a perfect match that they should do because it's who's going to see who has the more fight. Not who who's the bigger dog, but you know, you guys know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I kept I just, seeing them uh, post that on, on their stories. Like, who do you want uh, a million to guard? Do you want uh, Tim to guard and all that? Well, yeah, that is a way better matchup, though. A Millie, a Millie versus White Iverson and uh, Tim against Frank Nitty. I like that a lot more. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I don't think it should be like a set thing where like Tim guards Frank Nitty the entire time because yeah, I mean, they'll like switch like, off and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like they should switch off. I feel like that matchup at least should happen for at least more than just one possession. Because think about it like this: mm-hmm. Do you think that oh Tim guarded Frank Nitty one time and Tim made Frank Nitty uh, miss a layup? Oh, uh, Frank Nitty can't ever score on Tim because Tim locked him up that one time. Yeah, like, that you one can't, time. Like, I'm pretty sure you you can't hold Frank Nitty to zero. Frank Nitty will not end up with zero. All right, yeah. Frank Nitty is going to clear the boards with just about every stat in every category. All right, like he is somebody who is a well-rounded player, and him playing in a street ball aspect is not something that people are going to be like, oh, he's not used to street ball. Like, we see the dog mentality mm-hmm. that Frank Nitty has. We see what Frank Nitty can do, even in a yeah. set. And it's so Drew he can League. transition to treat ball. Yeah, Drew League is physical as hell. <laughs> they, be, the, they be fouling. So. The Drew League is the most organized version of street ball. Exactly. Yeah. Cause they be, they're, they're dogs in there. Like, they don't give you no mm-hmm. soft fouls, and they will chew you out if you 
looking soft and weak. Yeah, you know, like you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. Yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I just feel like um, the Drew League is definitely more lenient with the physicality than the NBA is. I think that's why the Drew League should kind of get more recognition. And I'm not gonna lie, Drew League should at least be broadcasted. I think. I think they yeah, should get it, their yeah, games broadcasted. Sure. It should. You know? It's just with the NBA, you know what I'm saying? They don't want too much physicality. I mean, I guess, you know, people getting hurt, you know, losing endorsements, money, you know, the politics. You, you know how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Everything so they got to keep it. They got to keep it somewhat, you know. Yeah. yeah. Everything at the professional level has its politics, and that's yeah. what everybody's got to deal with. But, yeah. So back to the IG Live. The Instagram Live, they were basically just telling me, like, you know, what do you think about this, that, the third, and stuff like that? And I saw people in the comments, like, half of them were saying, hey, keep Chris in. Half of them were saying, um, why is he still in here? I thought everybody gets a minute. <laughs> I mentioned the book yeah. of facts, and then somebody commented, like, uh, here's a fact. Why are you still here? <laughs> dang. Uh, I was just like, dang. Well, uh, it, it was kind of like mixed reviews. So like half the people wanted me still in there. Half the people kind of like wanted me out because they wanted to get a chance to join. Yeah, they I wanted complete- their chance. Yeah. yeah, I completely understood. So then I think it was last night um, or the night before. I'm pretty sure it was last night. I just joined the live. Um, it was supposed to be um, a Millie and Scotty. Uh, runs the East Coast page, and I think he was going to invite Tim or Slim. So I'm just there on some chill stuff. No screen recording, none of that. I'm just like really just like mm, let me just hear what they have to say. I'm gonna just be a I'm gonna actually just be a spectator. Mm-hmm. Not even five ten seconds in, a Millie's like, oh, Chris is here, and then Scotty's like, oh, Chris is here. Let's invite him. Like boom, right away. 